Emotions are still indeed raw after grapple with the death of Sylvester. But this brings us to the this brings to the fore the issue of emotional intelligence. How, for instance, can emotional intelligence help in tackling bullying? And let's depend this discussion now as author of performance strategies and youth advocate Abiola Champ Salami joins us. I want to say thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, so we, um, we're speaking about the ripple effect of bullying. That it doesn't even start with a child. But someone once said that most of our parents suffer from PTSD and they don't even know it. And or some do, but cannot help themselves. Talk to us. What should parents or what should everyone be looking out for so that you do not fall into that vicious cycle of doing what someone else have done to you? Great, great, great question. Um, let me begin by sympathizing with the parents of Sylvester and the family and every loved, everyone connected to Sylvester. This um, is not an interesting moment, um, and I pray that the Lord will comfort your heart. That said, it is important for us to know that when bullying comes up, there are two parties. There is the victim, and there is the one that is victimizing the victim. The two of them have issues. How does bullying come to play? A lot of times, people who bully, they're actually hurting people who are looking, at, who are looking for a, a, an opportunity you know, to release the thing that they're going through. Some of them are traumatized. You know, um, some of them have been hurt deeply. Uh, some of them, they are going through, their parents are probably going through a rough patch. And the way they express uh, um, their anger and the way they express their emotions, which they can't explain, you know, could be through bullying. Is that an excuse? No. And that's why it's important for parents, you know, to pay attention also even to emotional intelligence. You see, while we can talk about the school from now till, till eternity, it is important for us to also look at parenting. These boys, these senior boys that went to the junior class or the junior dormitory to bully Sylvester, it is important to talk about their parenting. What kind of parenting did they, are they having or did they have? Um, um, how much of emotional intelligence uh, have, have, have they, have training, learning, have they gone through? Is this in the curriculum for, from the school? That is one. How are the parents also engaging with them? Because you see, every one of us, we're a product of nature and nurture. Um, nurture, by the way, we were groomed from childhood. And you may realize that a child bullying in school could even be the, <laughs> the child of a parent who was known to be a serial bully in school, in his or her own secondary school. I mean, the other day, uh, I saw a post by someone who bullied me sorely and who is also campaigning against bullying now. And I can't but remember the experience I shared with this person. I was wondering, okay, so now because your children are being bullied now, then you are campaigning against bullying, but you were receiving some incentive, some joy, some happiness, you know, from bullying other people. So it's important we pay attention to emotional intelligence. It's important that we teach people about kindness, about love, Teach children, but teach adults. See, most of the issues we have in the world, they are adult issues, and then reflecting on children. Of course, these adults got the problem as children as well. And so it's important that now where we are, teach children, teach adults about kindness, about love, you know, about respect for people, about empathy, seeking to understand other people before you are understood, and not always trying to wield your power to show your dominance over other people. And this is not just about school system. It, bullying happens at the workplace. Bullying happens in marriages. Bullying, ha bullying happens in families. Bullying happens even government bullying citizens, mm -hmm. right? So um, we're all talking about this because a child is dead, but I hope we can use this as an opportunity to correct these things across the spectrum of our society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well said. Um, they do say if you want to teach them or if you want to get them, get them young. And so the schools are where you would start. I'm wondering, in terms of moving forward, every human being, every person I've spoken to in the last couple of days has had some form of bullying happen to them in their own uh, past, whether they were in school in Nigeria or elsewhere. My question now is not uh, is whether it can be mitigated through the school by putting it into the curriculum anti-bullying practices, maybe like setting some anti-bullying days, just um, doing certain things to retrain the mind of these children at a very young age. Um, I wonder if that is something you have heard of 
okay. or you would even recommend okay. and if you can see that happening. Okay, that, that, that's a good thing. Um, th th there are two ways to deal with this. There's a preventive measure, which is preventive. prevent children from, being, from bullying and being bullied. And there's also the curative measure, which is people who have been bullied already. You see, uh, if you've been bullied, even if you were bullied in your teenage years and you are 60 or 70, um, you will still recall it. Yes. And it may affect you even in your 70s because, you see, when you are bullied, it's easy to lose your self-esteem, to lose your self-confidence. And the moment you see the object of your bully, uh, no matter how old you are, you may just travel back in time to that 30 years ago or 40 years ago. So while training and putting it in curriculum could help, it is also important for people to speak out and people to get intervention. Um, I, I was dealing with an issue um, not too long ago, um, a, a client who is in the mid-30s, and to realize that the reason this person is ineffective at the workplace is because of bullying that happened to this individual in secondary school. And the person's current boss looks exactly like the individual that was bullying this fellow uh, while the person was in secondary school. Triggers. And this bully, this, this boss now, doesn't have anything, doesn't have any future of a bully, but the image of the boss triggers the memory, and of course it, it uh, prevents the individual from functioning effectively. So it's important that we put it in curriculum for children uh, in the schools, for children to learn, and not just about curriculum, it is also the conduct of the teachers and the management of the schools, because I can teach you whatever I like, but I may behave contrary, and it's known, widely known, that what children see consistently, they believe in it more than what they are taught in school. Also, parents to model the same thing. Don't condone children who are bullying. Uh, don't, don't, control, uh, don't condone your child because your child seems to be more powerful than other people. And even you as well, don't bully other people and your children could be watching. So it is not just about the school system. We put things in the curriculum for the school system. We ensure that parents as well, they imbibe the same thing that they are teaching their children such that we have a better society. All right, um, Abiola, talk to me about the importance of parents playing their role, because some have accused parents of almost passing the bulk to the school to actually raise their kids. Mm. Where's the role of parents doing, playing their role and also having the school, because I went to a lovely school, by the way, in, um, in every school, and it shaped a lot of who I am. But nevertheless, that cannot replace what parents can give to a child. Mm. Talk to the 21st century parents. They're too busy mm. to actually parent their children. You see, sadly, uh, we have a lot of mothers and fathers and few parents. Motherhood and fatherhood is a biological thing, you know, that you, 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 you created a child with mm. some from intercourse. And parenting is the responsible uh, process of grooming a child. And yes, we're all busy in corporate, working, and trying to make hands meet so you can pay rent, so you can buy a house in Badan Island, you know, so you can do all of those things. But it is important to know for all parents, as you watch me now, I just want to remind you that you cannot delegate your parenting responsibility. You can delegate it to the school, you can delegate it to house help, you can delegate it to even a cousin or a relative. It is your responsibility. If you want this child of yours to have a great future, if you want this child of yours to be renowned in the future, it is important that you put in the work. I get it. You're working almost 24 hours. But also, we can always create some time. Daily, it could be twice a, it, it could be twice a week, you know, but spend some time with your children. Oftentimes, children becomes what we give to them, what we feed them. And when we don't feed them, and I'm not talking about food now, I'm talking about what we feed them mentally. Uh, children get confidence more from parents. And then when the children get even school, to, to school or to the uh, larger society, and anybody's trying to bully that individual, what the child is bringing from home helps the child to stand solid. Parents, we can't delegate our responsibility. We have to continue to groom our children and grooming them appropriately, not just about buying stuff for them, but about ensuring that that individual has good self-esteem. You see, self-esteem is the in thing. Not about driving their esteem from, from, from the cars they drive, from uh, the kind of phones they use, or from the kind of schools that they go to, but driving their self-esteem from their person. And largely, parents are the models to give that to them. Really quickly, before we go, let's bring it back to this particular situation. Um, so there are the bullied and the bullies. 
Um, there are some names that have been listed of some of the children. What should be done to those who have been accused of this bullying? Like, how should this play out um, in—, in um, should they be uh, reprimanded? How, and what kind of reprimand would a bu would be enough for a bully in this case? Yeah, okay. Um, first is to know that this shouldn't be covered up. There shouldn't be any cover up. Um, second is to know that uh, these bullies themselves need intervention. And shielding them from intervention is not helping them. Shielding them from intervention is making them worse individuals than they are right now. Um, and this is not about blame game. This is about looking for a solution. So it's important that uh, they are not shielded, and also they are not fired at the same time. But it's important that they, they go through therapy, they learn, they change. Okay, let me just quickly bring it because I know you have a book on emotional intelligence. How does this help people that we've been speaking about, these categories of people we've been speaking about? Quickly. Okay, great question. Uh, and, and I quickly answer with what a father told me, a parent told me. Who said that after reading the book on the magic of emotional intelligence, that he started using it as for morning devotion in his family? Mm, okay. So every day with his children, they read some portion of it and then they pray and they go about their day. Mm. Because inside it are tips that will yeah. help people. Thank you so much for <laughs> coming right, thank in you and very talking much. with thank us you. this afternoon. Thank it's you. always good to have you. Thank you. Thank you.